March, the World Health Organization asked industries and governments to increase manufacturing by 40%. But as they struggle to meet rising demand, a technology used for rapid prototyping is stepping in to fight the PPE shortage. Well, medical supply shortages are now being met with a new solution, 3D printing. The technology is not new. For years, 3D printing has been used to create prototypes and products from jewelry to prosthetics. In 3D printing, also known as additive manufacturing, a digital file is uploaded to a 3D printer, which builds a 3D object by adding layer upon layer of material. I think the value of 3D printing is, is really shining right now uh, with the ability to, to make parts in a matter of days and make those parts wherever you need them around the world. 3D printing firm Stratasys is ramping up production of PPE, coming up with design plans for face shields, ventilator parts and nasal swabs, bringing vital gear to the market. We've got the likes of, of Boeing and Medtronic and Mayo Clinic and Blue Origin coming together along with 100 other companies. Uh, and we've been printing face shields uh, that we've been giving out to uh, uh, hospitals and so forth. And so far, the coalition uh, has produced over 50,000 face shields. And I think that's a great example of being able to uh, really, in a matter of days, uh, leverage the technology and the customer base to start putting PPE into the field as a bridge to uh, traditional uh, production. Is this a big opening for your industry? The fact that the technology's advanced uh, so well over the last several years, we're now doing all sorts of different materials so we can be producing real functional parts uh, that have real value, real application. Uh, and, uh, and we're seeing that now uh, displayed really worldwide. And scores of volunteers are deploying the technology to help protect healthcare workers. PPE are popping at a library, 3D printers across the country. At the University of Utah, library staff tap campus brain power to make an estimated 1,200 face shields for hospitals. Vince is working his makeshift assembly line in the family kitchen. Using a 3D printer he got when he was nine, Vince is making PPE face masks for those fighting the pandemic. Networks of companies, universities, and even individuals are taking action in a globalized effort to pitch in. David Culver tells us how toy box 3D printers from China are helping families in the U.S. create their own at-home assembly lines. And as millions in the U.S. are now under stay-at-home orders, Toy Box has seen sales go up, driven, he says, by the goodwill of his customers. You know, without our help at all, they essentially formed a Facebook group and our community was the one really driving it. The Facebook group has become an online forum to share about various medical supplies that can be printed in 3D. I just recently retired as a salon owner for 16 years, and um, I'm a stay-at-home mom now. Jenny Lee from Southern California has mobilized her whole family to help. They are printing out Y splitters for ventilators. It's a simple plastic that channels air from one input to two outgoing tubes, potentially maximizing the use of ventilators, of which some hospitals are experiencing dire shortages. In Washington State, aerospace manufacturing engineer Christian Parker working from home and joining in on that effort along with his three kids. I am not a medical professional at all, um, but if this is something that I can give that helps save somebody's life or help take stress off of a doctor or take stress off of a nurse or whoever um, and help on those front lines. If it if it does that, then I'm good and I'll keep doing it. Because usually we'll just print a toy and play with it, but now we're able to help people by printing what they need. And I shipped out uh, 10 units to a lady in California who's coordinating with hospitals in Zimbabwe and Ghana as well. So we're now reaching international <laughs> locations. Nobody really saw coronavirus coming. Uh, supply chains are shot right now, but anyone with a 3D printer is able to build these, these things at home now. But with that accessibility and innovation comes concerns over quality. I spoke to a professor of mechanical engineering about the potential dangers of DIY. You are the maker czar at MIT. You know, you are a champion of DIY, and yet you've also spoken out about the risks of 3D printing healthcare equipment. What are the risks? So I don't want to be misunderstood in that I'm telling people that, you know, if you've got the ability to make things, you know, that you shouldn't try to do anything. Just people have to be careful to make sure that what they make is actually going to do the job. When you 3D print parts, 
there's no guarantee that once somebody's finished with that part of the face shield, that they'll be able to sterilize it. There's no guarantee a typical do-it-yourself type person will be able to understand the chemical reactions between cleaning agents, the materials they're using, and then also the interactions between the people that use them and the materials they build things out of. There's just one example out of 30 different things that can go wrong if you build something to look right but not work right. There's a lot of good intention out there. So what should engineers and makers do with 3D technology to help frontline medical workers? I'll give you a litmus test. If you can make something for a hospital that isn't something that's protective, for example, a mask, face shield, etc. If you can make something like that that will benefit people, you don't have to worry about it failing, that's a good place to start. Now that's not the only thing you have to worry about. Uh, you need to understand whether or not the hospitals need it, if they will accept it. Uh, many people are trying to donate things right now and hospitals, they just, they cannot take them in. The pandemic has jump-started innovation. As makers the world over step up to the challenge, these developments in 3D printing could signal a change in the way we make or create in the future. I think that uh, 3D printing is, uh, is now getting the world's attention, you know, for, for the right reasons uh, in terms of the value that it can provide. And uh, there's a lot of, lot of uh, great innovations happening in our industry. And I think you'll see the technology continue to advance in the healthcare space. And all of this mess that we're all going through, to know that you have people all the way, you know, from, from the teenage years up to a lot of the engineers I've seen in their 50s and 60s, cranking away, building things just because they're trying to help.